Pity, no pity. We have here Dionker. Bre- we have here Dionker Brewer, formerly the owner of Styles Entertainment. Am I right? Yes, sir. You met? Yeah, uh, we go back. He's the guy who provided me with my first track ever for War in the City. Yes, sir. And yeah, I can still hear it in my mind. And you remember that talent competition on June the tenth, two thousand? Oh yeah, we had a ball. Tell them how I did. Oh, you did wonderful. <laughs> yeah, everybody stood up, gave you Oh yeah, what? Yeah, we had some really good performers in that one, and we had some like that guy who you know that white guy trying to act black, grabbing his crotch. Uh, you can't remember maybe because he didn't leave an impression on you. <laughs> if you can't remember him, that's know, man, that's not good. But the guy, what happened to the guys who won the first place? You know, the five black guys who uh, wowed everybody with the performance. Uh, Woodland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Boone, what happened to Boone? Because you remember, you remember that uh, lead. What was her name? The lead singer. She's like. She called me down in front of everybody. Where's the guy who sang that song? I want you to know you're going to go places with that song. You remember them Boone? Oh, uh, Boone, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That, I don't know where they are. I don't know where they are, but uh, probably somewhere doing some good things. It was real good. Yeah, because if that song ever makes it, I'm still working on it. I'm going to L.A. this November the 3rd. Oh, yeah. I got someone who wants to do a documentary on my life. Oh, really? Yeah, That's I ain't. Yeah, he's a nice kid. Now he tells me uh, it might not go nowhere, so he's being honest with me, and that's why I trust him. If he was telling me, oh, we're going to make me rich, I wouldn't trust him. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm still writing songs to reach out and grab it. That's great, Chris. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And what happened to Styles Entertainment? Oh, um, for Styles Entertainment, it's, it's, you know, we just went through that phase. And yeah. Nothing, we, it's we hard. It's, it's kind of hard in, ta- in a no-name town like this on the East, on the Cheese Coast. I mean, East Coast. <laughs> to get something like that going. But any of you record company executives looking for someone to work for you, I'd recommend Dionka Brewer. I thank you, Chris. You're welcome. I thank you. It's been a and pleasure working with you and uh, just knowing you as a person. And, and all your, I hope that all your efforts pay off. And if I do succeed, you'll be one of the first people I tell. All right. I appreciate that, Chris. Pound. Good luck to you, buddy. My man. Yes. <laughs> what a p- what a pity. No pity. Well, anyways, this guy had a showcase on June the 10th, 2000, and I wrapped my song, War in the City, a cappella, and had a standing ovation while I was rapping, and when I was finished, the person on, in charge on the stage, the host, gave me a hug, said, you were preaching, man, and, uh, People in the audience, they, they were giving me a standing ovation. Now, to tell you more about this, me, my mom, my Aunt Didi, and my granddaddy, and one other white rapper were the only white people there. <laughs> and there was this girl there, and she was in a group called Boone, a gospel army group, her sister and her brother, I think, and she was the best looking girl in the place. And I tried to, to say hi to her earlier, and she just, you know, nonchalantly, hey, but after I did my song, rap my song, they got up on stage to sing. She's like, where's the guy who just sang that song? I stood up, here I am. She's like, I want you to know, to know you are going to go places with that song. And, well, did I place? No. <laughs> I'm told that 
the first five places were going to be put on a compilation CD. But I'm told at the very last minute, this girl got up and sang a Mary J. Blige song. I'm going down a cappella. And now I'm told that she took fifth place, but I would have taken fifth place otherwise. I talked to some of the judges, and they told me that they had put me in first place. Yeah, well, but they told me that he chose the people he wanted to put on the compilation CD. Then I had somebody tell me at the pizza, he was washing dishes, he told me they chose you last place. You know why? Because they're haters. I hate to see people succeed. And I don't know. How did I do it? I just don't know. When two of the judges told me that they gave me the highest marks for first and second place, I just don't know. Well, anyways, I will move out of the way and I will show you the music this guy created for me. Or well, more correctly, he sampled it from me. For me, he he. I've tried to ask him who to get it from. He just can't remember. He says, but he says what he did was that it was played. He slowed it down from its original speed so that it would sound like it does now instead of what it did sound like. I, either way, it was sampled, and I can't use the samples, especially if I don't know who wrote the sample, so I could get it cleared. Not only that, but while well, you listen to the music, you see it's good music. It's a good start, but it's just not developed enough. Here it goes. I would like to say thank you, Dianco Brewer, for giving me a start. I had to start somewhere. He agreed to work with me, even though I didn't win a place in the showcase. And he sold me this beat for $200. Man, I wish I could get something original, though. I don't want to be a copycat. I want to be as original as I can be. What a pity. No pity. Pity, no pity.